good evening, everybody. It's a privilege and a joy to be back with you um, in the Word of God this evening. Um, New Year, and we are going to, uh, and we're going to, uh, we're going to look at some scripture that will help us as we do go into the new year uh, to uh, to live a life that is that is pleasing unto our God, and to live a life that is uh, that, that will help us grow closer to our Lord. Um, I know uh, in the new year, a lot of times there are uh, uh, there are folks trying to trying to do things better, trying to make changes, things like that. Um, a lot of times, people uh, have uh, resolutions or, or whatever you would like to call them. But um, I think that every single day, that what we ought to be doing, what we ought to be striving for, is serving the Lord the very best that we can. And that re- that's re- that's something that renews every day, not just at the beginning of a new year. Uh, this, uh, this evening, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter number 4, Ephesians chapter number 4, and we're going to begin in verse number 22, uh, Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 22, and we're going to read all the way down to verse number 27. The Word of God says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse number 27, neither give place to the devil. Let's open in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank you for the opportunity that you've given us, Lord, to have this online platform, Father, through social media and through uh, the, other, uh, the other avenues that we have. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity you've given us to have this so that we can, you know, we can come together and we can uh, be in your word together and we can look at what it is that you would have for each and every one of us, Father, to live a life, to, to serve you, God, that we could, we could be pleasing unto you and, God, we could do things uh, to serve our Lord. Father, we pray that you'd speak to us Father, we pray that you'd help us, Lord, to apply your word into our lives. Father, that we can serve you the very best uh, that we are able. We love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we look at this scripture, obviously, uh, with the with the time of year it is, with, with New Year's just being a, a couple of days ago, um, it's, it's easy to understand why we would go to this scripture. It's easy to understand why we would go uh, come here. Uh, it, it talks about a, a newness, right? It talks about a new beginning. Uh, verse number 22, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Now, that's not talking about a new year. That's not talking about uh, waking up new in the morning. That's talking about when we accept Jesus into our lives, when we, when we have that relationship with Christ, there ought to be a newness within us. There ought to be a change that takes place within us. There ought to be a difference. People ought to be able to see that that, that, that there is something different about us. We, we've been called a peculiar people. And we ought to be that peculiar people for our Lord. People ought to look at us and say, you know what, I don't know what it is, I can't figure it out, but there's something different about me. And when they start to figure or start to wonder and start to ask, what is different about you? The answer is Jesus. Jesus is the difference. And that's what verse 22 is telling us. There ought to be a putting off of the, of the old man, the, the, the life we lived before Christ, and there ought to be a new person when we do have Christ. And when people start asking us what's different, our answer is Jesus. Jesus, okay, verse 23, clears that up. It says, and be renewed by the spirit of your mind. There needs to be that newness after Jesus than there was before Jesus. And we can make all of the all of the resolutions and all of the decisions to make changes in our lives that we want to do. We can make all of those decisions. We, we, we can decide we're going to do all of those different things. And we can stick to them and we can make, we can better ourselves in so many different ways. But if there's not a renewing with Jesus within us, it's all in vain. It's all on the surface. It's all temporal. It's not eternal. Because there has to be that renewing in the spirit. We have to be a new creature in Jesus before any of it's going to matter. We can do all of the the wonderful things. We can do all of the good deeds. We can do all of this and all of that. But unless it's in Jesus, it means nothing. 
verse number 24, and that you put on what? The new man, after which God is created in righteousness and true holiness. How do we get that new man? How do we get that new individual? How do we get that newness that we've been talking about? How do we go from who we used to be, living for ourselves and serving ourselves and serving the world and serving our flesh, to a new individual, a new person who is serving Jesus, who is following Jesus, who is trying to live our our lives according to the Word of God? How do we get that? Where does it come from? Putting on the new man, which after... God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. Where does it come from? It comes from God. You see, we can't make that choice. We can't make the decision to be good enough. It's not within us. It's not within our power. We don't have that ability. It's it's God. God does it. And how does God do that in our lives? Does God just select us and say, hey, you know what, Will, I want to make you new. I want to give you new. No, no, no. Listen, he's created it in righteousness and in true holiness. Where is righteousness and where is true holiness according to the word of God? Who is righteousness? Who is true holiness according to the word of God? It's Jesus. He was the sacrifice. He was the perfection that we couldn't match up to. He was the, uh, he was the, uh, he, he, he was what we could not be. The Bible tells us that he was tempted in all ways as we are tempted. And yet, he sinned not. He, te- he, he, he dealt with the same things that we deal with. Just, just think about some of the things that he must have dealt with during his ministry, during Jesus' time on earth. Think about some of the things that he must have faced, some of the things that he must have dealt with, just, just in being a human being, just in taking that flesh that he had. I'm sure that Jesus dealt with frustration. I'm sure that when his disciples would come and ask him questions that he answered time and time and time again, that that was an opportunity for frustration to, to, to set in and, 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 the, and, the, and the window and the opportunity for sin was there and it was open, but he sinned not. He continued every single time to answer them with truth and compassion. He dealt with that. He, he dealt with, uh, we, we know in, in the book of Matthew, we know that Jesus dealt with anger and with wrath. He, he went into the temple where they had turned it into, as he said, a den of thieves. And he chased them out because they had, they, they had corrupted God's house. And yet he didn't sin. Jesus dealt with pain. We know he dealt with pain. The, the crucifixion, the fact that he was on the cross and they, and, and that, and that, that narrative that opens up as we read the story of the crucifixion and, and the events that led up to the crucifixion, the beating that he took. The Bible says he was beaten with the cat of nine tails. The Bible tells us that, uh, that, that his back was opened up and laid open. The book of Isaiah tells us that, uh, that, that he, he, was, he was beaten to the point where he was unrecognizable as a man, as a human being. He felt pain. They put nails through his hands, through his feet. He died a a painful and excruciating death. He felt pain, just as we have felt pain. He lived and and he experienced people turning their back on him. The apostle Peter denied him three times. One of his own, one of the 12 that was with him each and every day of his ministry denied him three times. His own people cried out to crucify him. He dealt with rejection. He dealt with people turning their back on him. Just as we deal with rejection and we deal with people letting us down. And yet, what did he say on the cross? What were his words to that same group of people who crucified him, who put him on that cross? What were his words? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they've done. He dealt with the same things that we deal with. He faced the same things that we, that, that, that we face, and yet he didn't sin. So that's why verse 24 can ring so true, to, so true to us. That's why verse number 24 uh, can, can, can give us that hope. 
and put on the new man. See, there can be newness about us. We can be that new individual. I think that uh, that if we had the opportunity to gather in here on a Sunday night and we had the opportunity just to talk about who we were before Jesus and who we were after Jesus, we would see some amazing transformations in the lives of people. I know I could spend probably days talking about the difference between who I was before Jesus and who I was after Jesus, and I know you can do the same. Because if we truly have Jesus, this verse number 24, if we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness through Jesus, if we put on that new man through Jesus, we can talk for hours and for days about the transformation that God makes within us from before Christ to after Christ. What an exciting, what an exciting thing that we can experience through God. What an exciting thing that we can uh, that we can claim in our own lives through the power of God. And thank you, Lord, for what it is that you've given us the opportunity to do. But, but verse number 25 goes on to give us some instruction. Verses 25, 26, 27, it gives us some instruction. It tells us now that we have this new man, this is what you do with it. This is how you use it. Uh, we, we just had Christmas not too long ago, right? We, I'm, and and I'm, I'm sure that some folks got some some new things and some some uh, uh, some things that uh, technology. Uh, I bring that up because that's something I struggle with uh, from time to time is technology. Uh, my wife uh, got a got a new got a new car. Uh, she got her she got a new vehicle, and um, and uh, it's been a while since we've had a new vehicle. And uh, and these things I, I don't know if you've gotten in a new car recently, but um, but these things they do everything. They they do all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and, and, and we're, we're in that, we're in that car and we're trying to figure out all that it does. And at some point, I've had to take out the owner's manual to figure out how to use a lot of stuff that's in that car. Because it's new and, and, and I don't know how to deal with it. And, and, and I needed the instructions to help me figure it out. But we've got this newness in Jesus. We have this new, this new man. We have this, we're, we're to put on this, this new man in Jesus Christ. We're supposed to live this new life. We're supposed to have this new outlook. Well, what do we do with it? We have instruction. We have instruction. Verse number 25, it says, Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of, a number, of another. It says, just be honest. Just be truthful. Just speak the truth. That's our first instruction. Is speak the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is right here. This is the truth, the undoubted, infallible, perfect word of God. So if we're, if we're at a loss of what to say or what to do, right here, this is where we go to the absolute truth. The Bible tells us, verse 25, speak the truth. You speak the truth. That's our first instruction, verse number 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You know, that's one that, uh, that I struggle with, and that's one I, I feel like people struggle with a lot is the be angry and sin not. You know why? Because what happens when we get angry about things? And and and, and church, li- listen to what the Bible says here. In verse number 26, it says, be ye, uh, it says, be ye angry and sin not. Angry is an emotion that hits us. It's something that a lot of times we can't control the anger that comes in. But here's the deal. We cannot allow that anger to, he- to allow us to sin. That's what the Bible's telling us. The anger is going to happen. It's going to hit us. There are going to be things that take place that make us mad. There are going to be things that hit us that make us angry. You think, well, what in the world? Preachers get angry? Yeah, yeah, we do from time to time. We do. Don't believe me? Go drive, uh, go drive 440 or, or Interstate 40 at about 5 o'clock in the evening. Anger, anger will, will, will hit you and you're not even expecting it. Things happen. We get angry. We all do that. We all hit that. But it says, be ye angry and sin not. What happens when we get mad? Anger, uh, anger besets bitterness. And when we allow bitterness to come in, it's an anger that we hold on to. And before you know it, we, we, we're, we're angry and we don't even know why. And, and what happens is bitterness turns into hatred. And we know what Jesus said about hatred. If you hate your brother, you've committed murder in your heart already, is what Jesus told us. So, so when the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not, what it's talking about is, look, yeah, there are things that are going to happen that upset us. There are things that are going to happen that make us angry. What we need to do is forgive. 
We need to let it go. We need to get rid of it. We can't hold on to it because that's where the sin happens. So our first instruction is just be honest and speak the truth. Second instruction is be angry and sin not. Imagine this world. If those two things would take place, there's, it, it's not by mistake that Paul here to the, to the church at Ephesus, it's not a mistake that he gives these two instructions after he talks about putting on the new man. Be honest, be angry and sin not. Think about our world if just those two things were different. If everybody were honest and nobody allowed anger to control their decisions. Just imagine our world if those two things were different. What a different world we would live in. What a different, how different everything would be. Just just some of the things that we're dealing with socially right now in our country would be so different if, if we were just honest. We didn't allow anger to control our decisions and our actions. What a different world. What a different country we would live in. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And and lastly, in verse number 27, this is the big one. This is the one that that, that we need to really make strides to, to, to accomplish in our own lives individually. It says, neither give place to the devil. What verse number 27 is saying is don't put ourselves in position where the devil has an opportunity to get into our lives, to get into our minds, to get into our hearts and to tempt us to go back to that old person that we used to be. And church, that is a battle that we fight not at the new year, not just at the holidays, That is a battle that we face every single day when we wake up in the morning. Because when we wake up in the morning, there is a spiritual war that is taking place, that is raging, and it happens every single day. The devil wants our attention. The devil wants our time. The devil wants us to go back to that old man. Why? Why does he want that so badly? Why does the devil fight that, fight for that so, so hard? Why does the devil want ground in our lives? Because if we're, if we're serving ourselves and if we're, we're, we're giving the devil opportunity to mess around in our lives, that means that we're not serving Jesus. And if we're not serving Jesus, then we're not being used to build the kingdom of God, which means people aren't getting saved, hearts aren't getting changed, and the destiny of the people we come in contact with is still hell, and the devil still gains the victory in the lives of those folks. He wants to gain ground in our lives so badly because misery loves company. He knows he has lost the battle. He knows he's lost the war, but he's going to take as many people with him as he possibly can. The Bible tells us in verse 27, neither give place to the devil. That wraps up everything else. In verse 25, he said, speak the truth and be honest. In verse number 26, um, he said, be angry and sin not. Don't allow anger to to dictate your, your decisions and your actions. And then in verse 27, he says, and by the way, don't let the devil make cause you to, to, to make foolish decisions and, and, and do foolish things. Don't give him the opportunity. So how do we not give the devil the opportunity to work in our lives? If there's a spiritual war that's, that's raging each and every day, what do we do? It's simple. It's simple. We get in the Word of God. We spend time with God. If we are spending time with God, the devil doesn't want anything to do with that. Because he's defeated. We spend time with God. We spend time in his word. We spend time in prayer. We talk with God. We allow God to speak to us through his word. And we allow God's word. We allow God's word to be the authority in our lives in the way that we live. We do these things. Why? Not so that people can look at us and say, wow, what a great person. Wow, they do, the, they do the right thing all the time because church, we fail. We're not perfect. We do make mistakes. We do fall. We do, we, we do make bad choices. We ought not strive for that, but it happens. We don't do these things so that people can see us and say what a great person they are. We do these things. We live this life. Paul gives this instruction for one purpose and one purpose, one purpose only. And that's for people to see Jesus in 
us so that we may be used as tools by God to grow the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. The purpose is to win souls. The purpose is to glorify God. The purpose is to, the, is to grow the kingdom of God. You know, church, if we, if we didn't have a purpose after salvation... If God didn't want to use us after salvation, then what are we still doing here? We get saved, God ought to just call us home. But we have a purpose. God wants to use us. We are God's tools to be used for Him to win people. And it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about His honor. It's about His glory. It's about His kingdom. As we do roll into this new year, let's think about just the daily, the daily battles that we face. And let's start each and every day fresh and new and ready to serve God. That's the challenge. That's the challenge of the Christian life is each and every day to put off that old man, to put him away, say, nope, I'm not, I'm not living for him today. I'm living for Jesus today each and every day, to make that choice, to make that decision, and walk with Jesus every single day. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for the opportunity you've given us again to, to come together over the internet and through social media. And Father, we do thank you, for, uh, Lord, for your word. And Lord, how it can challenge us. God, and we do think about this, uh, about the new year, and, and a lot of times in the new year, we do think about uh, 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 doing things differently and, and, and making things new in our lives. But, but God, as your word has shown us, that's something we need to do each and every day. Not just one time a year, not just, not, just, not just once in a while, but God, it's something that we need to do every day. And God, I pray you help us to do it. God, I pray you help us to be ready, to be prepared, to face the battle that we're going to face, that spiritual warfare. I pray that you help us to put off the old man and to put on the new man each and every day to serve you, to glorify you, and to grow your kingdom. Father, we love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We miss you. Cannot, cannot wait. Uh, hoping uh, hoping that, uh, that soon we can, uh, we can be back together on Sunday evenings. But until that time, we're going to be praying for you and we pray for you.